Tax evasion has become a norm for the rich, the wealthy, the CEOs, and the political figures. But why does this keep occurring? The world is boasting of a new tax scheme, a reform introduced by the U.S. Yet many of these evaders are from the U.S., using U.S. soil for tax evasion. Hi, I'm Kavit Ahwe, and today's program will tell you everything you ever wanted to know about tax evasion and tax dodging. Coming up in today's program, tax evasion, what is it? Offshore tax havens and uh, the money, how does it end up there? Complex and loosely regulated tax system is the issue. Then, the U.S. increasingly becoming a center for tax evasion. We could also mention the U.K. They promise protection of the assets of millionaires and billionaires, billionaires through trust companies. And then we're going to take a look at something that is not really talked about when it comes to tax evasion, the ones that are being robbed of their rights. Money that can go for rebuilding societies and communities, the money being robbed from Main Street and ordinary people. We'll give you some shocking examples. Tax evasion. It's been around for a long time. There are laws meant to avoid the evasion, yet the practice continues. One group of countries stands out when it comes to tax evasion. The OECD, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, represents 38 mostly wealthy Western governments, like the US and the UK. Claims it has spent much of the last decade attempting to get agreements on rules that prevent tax evasion by wealthy individuals and major corporations. But the stats speak otherwise. OECD countries were responsible for 39% of the world's corporate tax abuse risks. But the UK clearly stands out. Some of the territories in the UK, like Jersey, Gersney, and the Isle of Man, were responsible for 29% of the world's corporate tax abuse risks. The failure of combating tax evasion is evidence when countries graded by the OECD as not harmful are responsible for 98% of the world's corporate tax abuse risks. So bad is the failure of preventing tax evasion that it has been recommended that the UN should take over the role of enforcing global tax rules. In order to get an idea about the world of not paying taxes, it is necessary to make a differentiation here about what is legal and what is not. Now, tax avoidance is the use of legal methods to modify a corporation's financial situation to lower the amount of income tax liability. Tax evasion is the use of illegal methods to modify an individual or corporation's financial situation to lower the amount of income tax liability. Now, some examples of tax avoidance, giving to charity, investing in an individual retirement account, uh, taking a child tax credit, and uh, taking mortgage and tax deductions are some examples. Now, one way of tax avoidance is the use of what's called tax havens. A tax haven is a foreign country or corporation used to avoid or reduce income taxes, especially by investors from another country. There's also what's called an offshore deferral, the ability of multinational companies to avoid paying taxes on overseas profits through a potentially infinite delay of returning those profits to the U.S. Let's try to get an idea about all of this. Uh, uh, we have our guest, uh, Stavros Mavradias, who's a Greek economist, works in the tradition of political economy, joining us. He's a professor of political economy at the Department of Social Policy of Pantheon University and was previously professor of political economy at the Department of Economics of the University of Macedonia. Uh, Stavros, welcome. Uh, looking at the rich and powerful politicians, etc., people who obviously make a lot of money, corporations to uh, uh, people, they are using the U.S. Uh, as a uh, tax destination of choice. Why has the U.S. Uh, and its states like South Dakota, Nevada, et cetera, become the tax de destination of choice for people who want to hide their uh, income or not pay taxes? Um, well, let me try to, to clarify this point, uh, these issues. Um, the first, we have to bear in mind that... Uh, the capitalist class, particularly in the West, in the West and its uh, political uh, representatives, are forfeiting the very rules they then themselves set. 
Uh, second, there is a long-run uh, fusion between capitalists in the West and their political uh, representatives. Uh, that is, uh, the latter become capitalists and active capitalists become politicians. And of course, both of them perform the same illegal or semi-illegal practices. Now, coming to your question, the Anglo-Saxon countries, that is, uh, the U.S. basically, but using the U.K. as a front in most of these operations. All right. Uh, it's interesting how Stavros talks about uh, uh, semi-legal practices. Well, um, let's break down what Stavros actually said uh, there, uh, which is true in almost all countries, and we're going to focus on the U.S. here. Now, many wealthy Americans and billionaires actually donate money to politicians who favor government policies who are friendly to their business interests. And what do they get in return? Well, they get low taxes and less regulation. That's really important for businesses or for their business. So we're going to go back to uh, Stavros and ask him about that. Uh, Stavros, what do you think? Uh, many countries, again, uh, using their money and storing them in offshore accounts. So uh, the, the Anglo-Saxon countries uh, are facilitated in this by, by their dominance on the global financial system. Uh, dollar is the main reserve currency, followed by euro. This is our InfoNews section where we take a look at what's shaking and moving in the financial and economic world. Well, our first look is at what's called the FATF, the Financial Action Task Force. Now, this headline read, has the FATF actually uh, become a weapon of coercion for the West? Why would that uh, be referenced here? Well, because it concerns Turkey. Turkey is now included in the list of great countries uh, from the FATF, which poses the question then, is FATF impartial? Key question there. Moving on to our next topic that we chose, and that's hyperinflation. The Twitter CEO, actually, Jack Dorsey, has issued uh, what's been described as a cryptic warning that uh, hyperinflation will soon happen in the United States. He said that it is going to change everything, that hyperinflation is very high and typically accelerating inflation, and it quickly erodes the real value of the local currency. Only time will tell. At this point, I think we're in that. And as I explained, this erosion of the real value of the local currency is where the focus is going to be. Moving on next to U.S. Uh, recession, actually, many economists are saying that there is a re recession in the U.S. already. There are worries about goods shortages, the labor market, and coronavirus, which has actually worsened dramatically. So at this point, these factors are playing into the fact that many are concluding that there's a recession in the U.S. already. Next topic, China's economy. Uh, well, we're, we're looking at it somewhat stumbling, um, and that's a big worry, because if China's economy keeps stumbling, it won't just take down Beijing. The whole world will collapse with it. So, uh, obviously a huge concern. The Chinese President Xi Jinping uh, is said that in order for that not to happen, he needs to strike a delicate balance between eliminating China's crushing debt and then maintaining consumer confidence. So a misstep could spur global chaos, both economic and political. In this in-depth section, we have zoomed in on the United States and how it has become a tax evasion destination of choice. Now, this comes from a country that has long condemned and actually jailed people who have committed this crime. First, let's take a look at the extent of U.S. involvements. In terms of the number of companies that are involved here, uh, called trust, you have about 205 of them, uh, which are holding combined assets, which are worth more than $1 billion. That's the amount or the value that uh, they are holding. This includes nearly 30 trusts that are holding these assets linked to people or companies accused either of fraud, bribery, or human rights abuses. Now, the immediate question that uh, arises here, aren't U.S. authorities, like the U.S. Justice Department and the likes, aware that this is going on? And this is where the situation actually gets interesting. Let's take a look at the trust industry as a whole. Now, uh, I mentioned a trust company. The tr trust company is part of the trust industry, which functions by sheltering assets and by promising levels of protection and secrecy 
that rival or surpass those offered in overseas tax havens. This shield is near absolute. That means it has protected the industry from oversight and has allowed U.S. states to become destinations to hide money. Now, so far, the states that are luring in wealth, uh, here's a map of the United States. Let's take a look at what those states are. Uh, in this case in point, there are five of them, Alaska, Delaware, Nevada, and New Hampshire. But South Dakota, that one right there, that's the one that has become the favorite. Uh, it is proud, actually, to have assets from, believe it or not, 54 countries. These are clients from 54 countries in terms of assets. And then you have $360 million, uh, which is the amount that they're holding. That has quadrupled over the past decade. One of the largest trust companies in the state, the South Dakota Trust Company. But why South Dakota? Now, this really goes back to a man by the name of Jonathan Blattmacher. He's the one right over here, okay? He's a lawyer and he's a, the U.S., what's been called or how he's been described, the U.S. US tax evasion specialist. He's the brainchild behind insulating the assets of trust from taxes and creditors. Okay, so how did trust companies then get away with this? This is really the key question here. Well, year after year, this is what happens. These trusts would pitch legislative proposals, which then, with little opposition, the state legislators would turn the proposals into laws, which in turn protected the trust from creditors, from taxing authorities, from foreign governments. Then the trust, uh, one of the things that it actually, uh, the laws have done is it would protect uh, the claims of future creditors, as you can see over here. So you can see how far reaching this uh, the, the uh, proposal by uh, the legislators, which turned into law, goes. So let's fast forward to today. The greatest irony of it all, then, is when it is the U.S. that has proposed a system of so-called reforms so that people and corporations pay their fair share of taxes. And this is while the U.S. itself is a source for not paying taxes. That global minimum tax would end the race to the bottom in corporate taxation and ensure fairness for the middle class and working people in the U.S. and around the world. All right, joining us to give us an idea behind why this tax evasion phenomenon has accelerated in the United States is Michael Harris. He's the financial editor of Veterans Today. He's also a podcast radio show host of The Short End of the Stick. He's been in the manufacturing, financial, and technology sectors for 30 years. Mike, welcome. The U.S. becoming the largest tax haven. Uh, Tell us how these states within the U.S., like South Dakota, for example, are getting away with it. You have these secrecy laws that have been enacted, um, and basically more uh, and more over the years, the U.S. to have become uh, the tax evasion uh, destination of choice. Well, in the USA, we've seen a long-term influence of organized crime uh, in our government. This is uh, pretty widespread. We see it in our corrupt judiciary. We see it in our bought and paid for bribed congressmen and senators. Uh, we see it virtually uh, every aspect where the U.S. has lost its moral compass. And now the U.S. has turned itself into a, a country that uh, is for sale to the highest bidder. So when you have uh, the changes in these tax laws, they're merely doing what uh, is asked of them by the drug cartels and by the people who are involved in human trafficking, arms uh, merchants, uh, all sorts of uh, you know, illicit uh, sex trafficking, things along these lines. These are the people who are making the money. Uh, the U.S. Uh, gutted itself industrially by, uh, under Bill Clinton by signing uh, these treaties, uh, NAFTA, GATLA, China into the, into the WTO. So a lot of this is driven by the fact uh, that people still want money, they still need money to live, and so they're going along by tolerating this organized crime because that's the, uh, the the way to make a living now. I mean, uh, the average guy on the street has a hard time. There aren't there aren't any high paying middle class jobs anymore. They've all been exported to China. All right, time to take a look at what's being said on social media about tax evasion. And it had one surprise, which is consistent with recent findings of numerous reports, which indicated that the U.S., as we have said, has become this destination of choice for tax evasions. All right, uh, this tweet, for example, if the EU and the OECD are serious about tackling 
international money laundering and tax evasion, then the U.S. must be addressed. Obviously the point that we're trying to make here. And uh, this tweet uh, was worth looking at also. It says, I'm not interested in hearing what we can or cannot pay for when the top 1% evade $163 billion in taxes every year. Okay, well, let's do a facts check um, on this and see if this uh, astronomical figure is indeed accurate. And taking a look at this particular entry, we can actually see that it is accurate. Uh, according to the IRS chief in the U.S., tax cheats actually cost the U.S. $1 trillion per year. Now, he said the so-called tax gap has surged in the last decade. The last official estimate from the IRS was that an average of $441 billion per year went unpaid from the years 2011 to 2013. And most of the unpaid taxes are the result of evasion by the wealthy and large corporations. Uh, let's see what uh, is being said about tax evasion in Europe. Now, we looked at the UK for our search here, and this is what we came up with. This person says that foreign assets held are a majority in the UK. And then Ireland, uh, in third place, comes uh, Cayman Islands, uh, which is used as shell company for tax evasion. Australia, and then uh, number five is Brazil. So this viewer makes a case and point about the real reason why the UK has actually left the EU and it's because of the new tax evasion law. Uh, the viewer blames Tory, greed, their reluctance to tax themselves, and the wealthy. Uh, and it says that it's endangering the people of the UK as a result. When it comes to you, if you would like to share a story with us, please let us know. Uh, while you're at it, please drop us a line and tell us how we're doing so we can actually improve the program. And now it's time to find out more about tax evasion from Mahdi. Hey, Kaveh. Thank you. Well, tax and financial systems are powerful tools that are supposed to create a just society. Tax revenues should be spent on improving people's lives, give equal weight to the needs of everyone. But unfortunately, it's not. The financial centers of the world, like the US, Europe, leaders are able to funnel and siphon money away and hide it in these jurisdictions through the use of anonymous companies. Under pressure from corporate giants and the super rich, governments have created systems that prioritize wealthiest over everyone else. How have they done that? Financial secrecy, tax havens embedded into the global economy. What happens as a result? Inequality and corruption is created, resulting in a corrupt system that undermines democracy. Before we actually dive into the subject at hand, let me ask a question. Are authorities aware of tax evasion? Sure they are. Here's the IMF on that matter. It is a, a big concern that we have a large amount of uh, tax shifting, tax avoidance, countries sending money to tax havens, uh, and that's reducing the tax base uh, from which governments uh, can collect revenues and do the necessary social and economic uh, spending that's required. So, there's your answer. Yet, the game goes on. Banks are also guilty of helping the corporations and the wealthy dodge taxes, like in the case of HSBC. I'd like to put on the record an apology from both myself and from Douglas for the unacceptable events that took place at our private bank in Switzerland. So just to be clear, what are you apologizing for? The lack of uh, controls and the practices which now judged with the benefit of hindsight we would not be at all comfortable with if they were happening today. The amount of money that the world misses out on tax evasion is shocking. One source, Tax Justice Network, reported that countries are losing a total of over $427 billion in tax each year to international corporate tax abuse and private tax evasion. But a closer look at the report reveals that the numbers are even higher. Multinational corporations paid billions of dollars less in tax by shifting $1.38 trillion worth of profit out of the countries where they were placed into tax havens. Corporate tax rates either were low or didn't exist there. They placed a total of $10 trillion in financial assets offshore. When it comes down to it, rich countries are responsible for almost all global tax losses. Which countries, you ask? 
Well, we covered that earlier in the program, but it is worth mentioning again. British territory Cayman is responsible for 16.5% of global tax losses. That's equal to over $70 billion. The UK accounts for 10%. That is over $42 billion. The Netherlands, 8.5%, which is over $36 billion. Luxembourg, 6.5%, that's over $27 billion. And finally, the US, 5.53%, which is over $23 billion. We have used the Tax Justice Network as a source for some of our data. And we felt it's necessary to relay the sentiment of Alex Cobham, chief executive of the Tax Justice Network. He said, a global tax system that loses over $427 billion a year is not a broken system. It's a system programmed to fail. Our governments have programmed the global tax system to prioritize the desires of the wealthiest corporations and individuals over the needs of everybody else. Wouldn't it be great if we can get a politician to be confronted with tax evasion questions? This was the case with Iceland's former prime minister. Pay close attention to how he breaks down after tax documents showed he and his wife used an offshore firm to allegedly hide million dollar investments. Have you or did you have any connections yourself to an offshore company? Uh, myself, no. Well, uh, the uh, uh, Icelandic companies, uh, what's, what's it called? The, um, it's, a, it's an unusual question for, <laughs> for an Icelandic politician to get. It's almost like being uh, accused of, of something. But uh, I have never hidden any of my assets. Mr. Prime Minister, what can you tell me about a company called Vintris? Well, uh, um, it's a company, if I, if I recall correctly, which is associated with one of the companies that I uh, was on a board of. So uh, now I'm starting to feel a, a bit strange about these questions because it's like you are accusing me of something. So what do you think? Guilty? Not guilty? You be the judge. But in case you don't understand the gravity of the situation, the following clip may jolt you in seeing what tax evasion is all about. The reality is not what you believe, that uh, um, your prime minister has uh, the power to, to decide on the future of your country. The power is hidden here. So when the UK Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Sunak, comes out and says the UK is committed to a global minimum corporate tax of at least 15%, rallying behind a US-backed plan, it should be taken with a grain of salt. What this deal does is ensure that with a minimum rate of tax that we can make sure there's a level playing field for countries and companies wherever they're operating, ensuring that they pay the right tax in the right places at the right time. Please write to us and let us know what you think about the program. Any questions and comments are welcome. The following are our links and addresses. From me, Mahdi, it's goodbye until next week. Tax evasion, which is different than tax avoidance, we need to make sure that that is clear to you. It's going to persist. Why? Because the law allows it to do so. It's as simple as that. But what is the downside of this? Well, it's how the rich and the corporations, how they're getting away with it and becoming richer as a result. Now, they're doing that at the expense of their citizens. Uh, money that uh, they're avoiding, well, it can go for things like infrastructure, for schools, for hospitals, and uh, th things of that nature in general. And in this age of COVID-19, where every penny counts, tax evaders need to be stopped. Of course, that's a huge challenge. Well, that does it for this edition of Economic Divide. It was great having you on board, and we do look forward to any comments or questions that you may have. Our contact information is on your screens. For now, it's goodbye from me, Kavitavoy. Looking forward to seeing you.